Hello, Warriors. Pre-Thanksgiving, day before gobble gobble. Hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, we got this bounce in the dollar from an area that Blake talked about. And then our guest yesterday, Raksha Sony, had resistance up around 9690, 96.97. I think this could end up being a failing rally. I don't know if we're going to try and pop it again or not. Also, I have some good news for you guys. Uh, Steve and Stelios will be here tomorrow, just in case there's something that moves while all of us uh, gluttonous Americans are eating and watching football. It's going to be a short one, but you could show up at regular time and, you know, if anything's happening, Steve and Stel will see it and give the reasons behind it. So, uh, you know, if you're not in the U.S. and you're looking uh, for some input tomorrow, uh, you'll get it from our team. I uh, also want to remind everyone that uh, to check out our website on Sunday night, we're going to have uh, we're going to have Cyber Monday uh, deal. So let's see what we have here. Maybe it's on the home page. I oh, still have the trial up here, but it's going to start Sunday night for 24 hours. I'm not going to tell you what the deal is. I'll just tell you you'll like it. So uh, check out our website, should be on the home page, our membership page, sign up page, Sunday night through maybe Monday afternoon, so that you can have a deal to be part of our training community. Also, uh, this is a good time over Thanksgiving. If uh, you have any doubts about where you're training, uh, make sure, first of all, that they're regulated, and then, you know, take a look at the spreads and the platform. And if you're looking for an alternative, just get a hold of Trent, not Brent, and Justin. They know them all. And they'll help you find one and you'll get rebates um, from your trading. And you could also pay for your, depending upon your volume, pay for your subscription here. So let's take a look at this half week uh, here. You know, we had this big break in the euro. It started last Friday, followed through Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we had this happening yesterday. Uh, this is when the um, market was selling, free falling. So again, uh, it kind of proves to me, even though the dollar didn't make new highs, a stronger dollar yesterday didn't help the market. I'm talking about equities. Uh, weaker crude market uh, didn't help. Uh, actually, I think uh, Raksha talked about 52.50. It was pretty close. We got to 52.75. Uh, on a one hour, I still have no divergence, but really didn't have any down here either. Maybe, yeah, at the last low. So I don't know what to do with crude. I do feel like I have some conviction about that the dollar has peaked. So, you know, that was a pretty good break in Euro, about 120 pips uh, yesterday. I'm not saying that we can't have A go up a little bit more and then sometime next week when it's a full week, come back down and have some type of C wave. This was uh, 114.72 down to 13.60. So about uh, 110 or so. So 110, if we fail from 26 or so, we'll take it right back down to the 113 level. Uh, definitely, it's going to be worth a probe for me, risking the low of the move if that happens next week. And yesterday, gold came off with the dollar strengthening. But before I get to the metals, you, you know, you have to talk about the yen. Uh, the yen is recovering with the S&Ps. Okay. Uh, I still think the yen is going to be a short up here. Uh, between here, 1330 uh, is about halfway back. I don't have my fibs exactly because I was just guesstimating where it might be a low. Let me fix it. There we go. Okay. All right. So uh, 113.26 is halfway, 1350. I think you could start scaling into that sometime this week. Uh, this was a pretty good break from 1420. Uh, almost uh, well, 190 pips. So, you know, we're at halfway back's reasonable. And then next time through here, 
you know, we could be going for 110. 110 looks like a magnet, and here's why. You know, I've been watching this moving average here on the daily for a while. I think it's a very possible target in the next couple of weeks. Uh, gold sold off yesterday with the dollar rallying, but it's popping again. It's almost gotten back everything it gave back yesterday. In fact, the silver has, okay, because I was trying to day trade yesterday that worked from 1445 up here. And look how it held this moving average, and now we're back in new highs. So it's starting to get a beach ball characteristic to it. Maybe we get ABC. Maybe we're going to form some type of continuation formation. But I think you really have a dollar play really working in the metals this time. Uh, seems to be trading with the, uh, the currencies, with the dollar. So uh, we're going to see if the dollar is bad, metal should be good. You know, Maybe we get 1550 silver. Okay, here you go. One thing is one thing is for sure, coach. Uh, people that yeah. were with us the day before yesterday and yesterday, yeah, we we weren't explicitly that crude uh, was looking to take out the low. previous. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, yeah, you got out it, of that pattern in play before that happened, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and from my personal position, as I said the day before yesterday, I I booked it because the the recovery was looking very feeble. I was yeah. I was looking Name for something it. stronger. Yeah, and yesterday, if you remember, I said that it looks like they first want to clean out, you yeah. know, uh, everybody that got long at that 61.8% FIB, and perhaps so where, then... So where did we go to, 78.6 uh, today's low, 52.75? You know something, uh, I want to see how the day is going to close. We're now, re we're now retesting uh, the breakdown point as resistance. Yeah. If yeah. we get rejected from here, yeah, there is more downside coming. Uh, okay. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this move is exactly what we said i mean like the an attempt to take out of the market the people that you know right. uh, tr try to to trade that 61.8 yeah because and... they won't try it again they you know exactly, exactly. you know, you know they, yeah. they've taken that you know buck and a half hit or whatever they had to take and you know i i've i've seen traders for you know decades and you know, you know what most amateurs say oh that crude burned me i'm never going to trade crude again you know they blame it. <laughs> they blame it on the instrument. When there, was, is all, the, there is uh -huh. already some. There is already some RSI divergence, but I don't. I don't yet consider it reliable because although we do have RSI divergence on the daily, uh, it's it's still within oversold territory. And yeah. uh, you know, for me to like divergence, I want to see you know the first part of the divergence being in oversold or overbought, and the second part being you know, uh, above the 30 line or below the 70 line. So, you know, I don't give so much weight to that. But I have to tell you that uh, one thing is for sure, after such a huge move, uh, there is definitely no um, way to advocate, no risk reward to attempt to be short here, right? Right. Uh, I mean, where would you place your stop loss? I'm not talking about day traders, of course, because yeah. as I said, we're now retesting 20. the previous... The under the, under the 2016 uh, low at 25. Yeah, so you know if you are a day trader, and <laughs> you want to yeah, and you want to try, you want to try being short here against you know the previous low. Okay, it makes sense, but you know at a at a longer uh, term uh, view, obviously we are closer to some kind of a corrective move higher than to another strong leg lower. That's uh, the only certain thing. Yeah. So anyhow, we're going to talk about it later. I don't want to... Okay. Uh, bl yeah, I want to I wanna see your... Uh, I want to see your silver chart to see if we're negating that breakdown with what's happened here the past couple of days. Because um, the metals are acting like, you know, they don't want to go down right now. They have little inner day uh, sell-offs, but, you know, people came right in and bought them. The gold yesterday True. and the silver. So, you know, I think everything is about the dollar, Steve. You know, the dollar was strong yesterday and crude was weak. And, you know, that didn't help the sell off that was happening in equities. Today we have the reverse situation. In fact, maybe it's going to be a weak dollar that um, holds the market together. I'm not saying it's going to turn into a, you know, raging parabolic bull again, but it could stabilize the market with a weaker dollar instead of a stronger dollar. So, um, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I have a hard time wanting to do anything today, uh, being off tomorrow and a shortened day Friday. So, you know, I'm a, spec I'm a spectator. Yeah, yeah, I'm a spectator till next week. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so 
uh, we'll have the banners up for the uh, special for Cyber Monday on Sunday, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll soon have them up. Okay. All right. So, you know, everyone hearing my voice, you know, if, uh, you know, you could take a trial and give yourself a few days to navigate around and you'll be able to make a better decision as to whether you want to uh, join us with a, you know, very good, very good monetary deal for whatever the promotion is. So, um, uh, looking forward to having a few days off. Uh, I have a stomach virus. You know, it's the third time I've been sick in three months, Steve. It's unbelievable. You know, I, I, I used to laugh at you, you know, because you were always getting sick and Grega from the kids. But, you know, I never imagined that my grandchild was going to be like typhoid Mary. And every time <laughs> she goes to every time she goes to daycare, which parents bring their kids sick to daycare. So then yeah. she gets sick and then my uh you know, then my uh, stepdaughter gets sick, and then my wife gets sick, and then my in-laws get sick, and then you know what? Then I get sick. So anyway, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, it's I'll lovely, isn't it? Huh? I'm not even <laughs> a parent. Huh? I, I mean, she's adorable. She's, I love her. She's beautiful. But you know what? I, I've been sick three times this uh, fall already. I've had enough of it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go out over Thanksgiving and find myself a protective bubble and do the shows uh, inside of a, uh, a tent so no germs can penetrate my environment. What do you think? <laughs> Sounds bubble like a boy. good Bubble boy. <laughs> anyway, uh, is Blake around today? Are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course he is. Yeah. How yeah, are I'm you, buddy? Here. Hey, hey I, was just, I was just listening to you talk about Ebola. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, uh, man. <laughs> that's what uh, that's what Simon was thinking. Um, yeah, so I was yeah. just uh, yeah. Well, it's not it's, blood. Uh, you know, you hemorrhage. Uh, those are blood. Yeah. But, but you know, anyway, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, my I stomach has been talking to me for about 24 hours. How's that? I, you know, I I cannot like ex you know explain to you guys um, as you know, somebody who's around kids all the time, when my kids, my kids have finally figured it out, oh, wait, I wash my hands with soap and that means I get sick less. Huh. Yeah. So they wash their hands I with soap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, they don't know that at two. They don't know that at two. You know, no, their no, hands, no. It, their it hands takes are everywhere. Them, it yeah. takes them a few years to figure that one out. I, plus, my, my, plus, plus they put their hands in their mouth all the time and they put their tongue oh, yeah. every, everywhere, everywhere, literally. Yes. Yes. Oh, gosh. Yes. It's a I mean, my son is, is often like leaking the mirror of the elevator, and I'm like, "No, what are you doing there?" <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. anyway, uh, and yes, tomorrow. Uh, just so, just so everybody knows, tomorrow is Thanksgiving holiday, and um, we are um, we're we're uh, obviously, if you're in the U.S., you're going to be. Um, with family and probably sleeping in, but you know, good news is if you're an early morning, you know, trader, I'll, I'll be taking the morning off. Uh, Steve and Stelios will be here, and they, they'll just they'll they'll do a quick broadcast, so you guys will have um, a little bit of coverage, especially if there's some moves yeah. overnight. I've been I've been around where Thanksgiving, um, you you've seen you know 30 pip trading ranges in the euro dollar. I've been around for 300 pip trading ranges in the euro dollar, so it's not uncommon um, to get volatility uh, because liquidity is so poor. So if there's there's some sort of news that breaks out. Um, you can actually see some pretty aggressive moves. Uh, not not saying that that's necessarily going to happen, but you know there are uh, ongoing Brexit negotiations. I guess there is a um, a meeting uh, happening, and I wish Amanda was here to to confirm uh, in a, in a few hours. Um, uh, Theresa May and I think it's uh, Juncker is meeting i i can't remember or or is it uh, barnier i i can't remember um maybe somebody else can clarify that but there's supposed to be a meeting a little bit later on today which uh it's uh simon says yeah it's younger so um you know uh, that maybe there's some developments brexit developments especially over the next couple of days so don't get too comfortable eating that turkey leg uh over the uh over the thanksgiving holiday um Depends how, uh, so, how sober Juncker is, because, you know, that's an element that later. 
<laughs> so, unfortunately, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, but it, but it's it's going to be important to listen to you know any kind of developments we have over the of course, of course the next few hours. Um, the euro dollar is uh, is a little bit better bid today, and 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 if you guys were you know if you use forex analytics, you knew that we 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 stopped at the support zone. Um, you know, here's the uh, the euro dollar uh, basic technical analysis from yesterday. Uh, you can see the four hour uh, well that's from this morning you know we paused off the 38 percent but yesterday you know we we're at the support zone noted yesterday as we were coming into the support zone and and that's given us a a, a good um whoops it's given us a good um good bounce from there you know uh, and and i don't think the euro is necessarily bullish right now but you you there, there's a few things that are pushing it um, you know, there's comments about the Italian uh, budget. Uh, also, the, the Market News International they ran a story saying that um, you know the Fed may be you know um, going neutral in, in early 2019, uh, but unnamed sources. So the, the spike was faded pretty quickly when that came out. But still, the euro looks constructive, and um, you know the fact of the matter is is uh, the euro as long as we stay above in my opinion above 113 it could be a, a bullish development I, I'll reiterate what I said yesterday um, the, it's the same same thing we had this false breakdown uh, I wasn't too keen on buying it yesterday on this uh, on this rally I actually bought a pullback and then I I, I took a, a like a 20 some odd pip loss yesterday I'm like you know what I'm just not gonna deal with it actually it was a little bit more than that I was like 30 some odd pip I just Poor timing yesterday on my part. Anyway, um, uh, uh, I, I actually put in a bid of 113.15 uh, at the 618 overnight, just in case we tried to develop some inverted head and shoulder pattern. But that doesn't look like it's going to be the case, at least not right now. Um, we could still uh, develop that. I mean, and you know, it's still possible. It's not impossible that we, you know, dip down to 113.15 before we. We rally and we get some sort of inverted, you know, head and shoulder pattern. That that could happen, but I think what what we should be, you know, just looking at is a you know potential here of a bull flag pattern. You know, we could we could you know develop some sort of bull flag pattern here. And um, bottom line is this resistance right here uh, at one four. Well, now it comes in at one fourteen fifty. I think that's going to be pretty key. Uh, I think that's uh, something that. As a, as a trader, you know, if in, in the event that we break 114.50, uh, then we're talking about a much bigger move, <clears throat> probably beyond 116. Now, remember, the whole reason why I'm constructive on the euro is the false breakdown. So the the false breakdown, this was – hold on, I was just listening in my office to see if they, they, they were yelling something, but it's nothing, nothing in particular. So this is uh, – this is this was a oops wasn't 127 percent extension of that I don't believe it was so I have to redraw because I had removed it already. Uh, where is the 127 percent extension? I think it was, it was maybe it was here. Um, but uh, there's there's 127 percent extension down here. I guess it was. Uh, 618, and I, I could have sworn there was another FIB level here, but whatever it was, I, I, I already deleted it, and I'm not going to waste any more time trying to figure it out. But anyway, um, that false breakdown is, in my opinion, bullish uh, for the euro. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't hit new trend lows. I think that um, now you'll find moves down to 113, 113.15, maybe down to 113, the figure is going to find buyers no matter what. So... With that being said, I, I was I was looking for a little bit deeper of a dip or a correction. Just haven't seen it. I still think that the euro dollar is going, you know, much higher than it is right now. Um, now, uh, how could that possibly be? Well, you know, today uh, just uh, there was a there was a a news story out that um, Navarro, um, you know, uh, Donald Trump's. Uh, 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 trade um you know hawk if you will on on china who, who well he's 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 a trade hawk really against china he's going to be excluded from the um meeting luncheon that uh that that trump is going to have with uh z so 
uh, of China. So you, you got a situation where if China and the U.S. play nice, which I think is a, a real big risk, um, you're going to get a boost in risk appetite going into the end of the year. So if you you know look at the S and P, the S and P could you know quite possibly rally from current levels. And if if you think about like what we've done here, let me let me grab the S and P. So you got uh, you know something that looks like this six one eight. 88% retracement, you know, we could do, I, I guess that would be a bad pattern. I'd have to, uh, to confirm that with, um, with Andre, it would be something like this 88% uh, retracement. But anyway, um, uh, that is quite possible if it seems like the relationship between China and the U.S., get better all right now if you see a move like that in the s p i'm not saying that it's it's starting right now but you know there's obviously a lot of work to be done if that happens then you know you're going to see the dollar weaken and quite could quite you know it could weaken substantially too especially if the italian budget comes together and um you know there's no black swan event with italy type of uh, deal and, and China improves, uh, the China-US relations improve, you could see a bounce in risk appetite and that's dollar bearish. So, you know, you could see the, the, the Euro dollar really, you know, push a lot higher than where we're currently at. Um, and again, I'm trying to look a little forward and I'm not saying that things are gonna get better, but they could. Uh, I know there's been a lot of talk, you know, you've had, um, you've had uh, just, you had Vice President Pence was just out, out, you know, in China last weekend, um, talking all sorts of smack. So, you know, and, and th that's just all part of the negotiating tactics. But when you get the two heads of state together, um, if they, you know, they walk away and, and knowing, knowing um, Donald Trump, and what we've seen from him, um, you know, he's gonna he's gonna walk away from the meeting and say everything's great, and you know we're best friends again, and um, and and then you know the market may cheer, and if it does, then again that's where dollar weakness it, it becomes a real big risk, and then we could see the euro dollar pop higher, Aussie obviously do better, um, you know. The cable is more dependent on Brexit, obviously. Uh, the Kiwi is already, you know, holding up very well. The Kiwi could, you know, continue to to blaze trails higher, especially um, the market is extremely short uh, Kiwi still. Uh, you know, uh, let me pull up this for you really quick. Um, we had uh, we had um, uh, I know Dale. I say we. I, Dale had uh, Adam from um, Movement Capital who puts together this free, OC, uh, free uh, COT data. If you pull up currencies here and you look at um, the uh, the Kiwi COT report, you can see that, um, that that speculators are still very short the Kiwi. And, and you know, that could continue to squeeze higher in the Kiwi. Same with the Aussie. If you look at the Aussie, it might be the very top. Yeah, you look at you look at the Aussie. You know, market's still extremely short the 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 Aussie dollar. So, from speculators are so, you know, if if things improve, like I said, between U.S. and China, we could we could really see a squeeze higher in the Aussie and the Kiwi, and we're already seeing it, and and the market's pretty still pretty bearish. So, I'm I'd be um, I'd be watching the Aussie and Kiwi uh, on the on the long side, if uh, if the Trump Z meeting goes well. So anyway, uh, let's see. Dollar Canadian, um, we failed at the 88% retracement. I wouldn't get too overly bearish the uh, the uh, the Canadian. Uh, we might we may correct back towards 132, but 132 is obviously this uptrend line. You know that will it will come back into play. So, um, but we could still. You know, make a correction from current levels. Uh, we do have Friday. Uh, we have Canadian CPI, so keep that in mind. Do what type of data do we have today? Uh, we have durable goods orders coming in a few minutes. Okay, um, but Friday, obviously, um, you know, with CPI and retail sales out of Canada, you know, maybe that's the the catalyst that that might drive us back to this trend line, or you know, maybe we get to the trend line ahead of 
um, the data and maybe the, the data is what makes us pivot from this trend line. I don't know, but um, I, I would be looking for a, for a move back down here over the course of the next couple of days. And, and that might be a good low risk, uh, you know, low, low, low risk entry for longs if that's what you're looking for. Um, dollar yen, I know, Coach was saying he's expecting, you know, lower for for dollar yen. I, you know, dollar yen's been really tricky. I, I told everybody yesterday. Uh, you know, one of the things that's made me so nervous about being short um, the dollar yen or any of these yen pairs, for that matter, is that they've held up really well in the face of equity market weakness. So, um, as the equity markets bounce, which they're bouncing today. Uh, you, you're seeing this big bounce in the dollar yen, euro yen, uh, pound yen still, you know, floundering around because of Brexit. Uh, Aussie yen's bouncing, uh, Kiwi yen. Uh, our chart of the day, the, the Canadian yen, we actually, you know, we'll close back above the 200-day moving average. Uh, we closed below it yesterday, but, you know, it looks like we might bounce back. So uh, uh, i I'm been very nervous about shorting the yen pairs, and rightfully so, because they have held up um, they've held up well and, and it makes it for a tricky environment because when the stock market is going down like it was the last couple of days you know what do you do it's hard to short the end pairs because they just they don't budge and when the market gets some sort of bounce uh, the these yen pairs uh, catch a bid so um, you know it is it is more of a challenging environment when you're trading these yen pairs but I will say that they are still still extremely resilient uh, especially considering, you know, the, the the market higher volatility and the lower um, risk appetite. So with that being said, uh, just just wanted to kind of cover some of the majors here. I'm going to pass it over to Steve. And uh, Steve, welcome back. Hey, Blake. Hey, man. What's up? So by the way, uh, oh, God, and God, still. Stelios, hey, I wasn't sure if you're going to pop up. I know you you got the, uh, uh, thank God I got man, kids passing me germs flu. bug. What? <laughs> I've got the man flu. It's okay. The man flu, the man flu, <laughs> the man with the girl flu. Um, yeah. And, and just, to, just to, I'm going to reiterate, guys and gals, we have a Cyber Monday uh, deal that's uh, that, that, that will only be for a little bit more than 24 hours, and it'll be Sunday night. So uh, that it'll be released so you guys – if you're, if you wanted to be part of the Forex an Analytics family, uh, this is the time to try it out because we have a really nice deal. It's only going to be a real fast one too, so you got to be quick. And um, I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Don't don't forget to mention our our sponsors too. Have a happy Thanksgiving to you and yours, Blake. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody here, and um, and I'll I'll see you on on Friday. Tim, do you Blake? It? Thanks, guys. Bye bye, mate. Okay, buddy. Bye. Hello, Steliosis. Hello. Hey, coach. Hello, guys. So, uh, yeah, Steve, I'm wondering what you're, you know, thinking here. Uh, that, do you think that was the dollar top? Uh, I think it's too early to say, uh, okay. but, um, and I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, the dollar rebounded uh, from this trend line, from this ascending trend line. So I would be careful because, as you see, I drew that several days ago. Oh, yeah. um, as you see, uh, you know, for us to have a confirmation that at least a deeper retracement is coming, we need under to under 96. Under 96. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Under, under the previous low, yeah, 96. So I want to see a daily close below 96. If we do, yeah, I do think that there is going to be some continued dollar weakness. Now, for us to say that this was the top, we would need to see a bigger move than that, probably than an, a daily close below 95. But I do think that the daily close below 96 should bring the dollar quite fast down to 95. And, you know, um, by that time, we will also be able to judge things like momentum and the structure of the move that's going to be developing. And then we will be able to see, to say with more certainty what's coming. If you remember anyhow, my initial target since a long time ago was this confluence of uh, resistances because it was a perfect confluence of resistances at 97.85. We didn't make it up there, but, you know, we came rather close. The market is yeah. not always perfect. And I had said that, you know, if, if actually we penetrated through that, we could even then make it yeah. to the confluence of resistances at 99. By the way, by the way weak numbers uh, across the board. 
Canadian numbers as well. Week so core durable goods came in at 0.1, expected 0.4. All revisions are lower. So I'm uh, guessing the dollar ooh, is going to be. Yeah, Canadian September wholesale trade sales minus 0.5 versus plus. 0.3 expected <laughs> US, US, US initial jobless claims a little bit higher, but okay. I mean, fractionally, yeah, those numbers don't, don't matter. Durable, really. US October durable good orders demolished minus 4.4%. Yeah. Wow, uh, yeah, yeah ma- minus 4.4%. I mean, horrible numbers. Uh, my uh, versus minus 2.6% uh, expected. Uh, previous 0.7, a revised down to minus 0.1. So uh, this is, for, this for is US durable, across the board. Horrible, yeah, we, got little, we got a little slowdown yeah. going here, guys. Yes, and, so and, no, and, not, not, not only horrible numbers, but the revision took us from a positive 0.7 to a negative 0.1 to US durable goods, and durable goods are usually a good leading indicator uh, for the health. It's one of the many leading indicators for the health of economy. Uh, continued claims more or less as expected. So, you know, Stelio, you know something. Um, can you please do me the favor? Um, yes. Can can you can you ask Blake because I know that he can find it on Bloomberg or see if you can find it. Um, City Group City Group has a nice uh, economic surprise index. Uh, can we pull up the latest economic surprise index because I'm pretty sure that the that the data have uh, have been horribly. Uh, missing to the downside in many many aspects lately. So I would want to uh, I, I would want to see this and and if we can find it. I know okay. that Blake has access to through Bloomberg. Asked, uh, I asked him already and gonna wait to see what he responds. Um, okay, actually, well, thank you. I wanted to mention one thing about the dollar because you were talking about it. Um, you know the recent rally when the DXY hit 97 and a bit and uh, you know it it stayed there for a bit. You know we started hearing all these. Um, uh, um, worrying comments from emerging markets and you know i've been thinking about the dollar and you know if if you have a reserve currency if your currency is a reverse reserve currency you have benefits but you also have responsibility you know the world needs dollars which is the reserve currency for transactions um like oil which is you know denominated dollars but also for raising debt denominated in dollars because that's very appealing for outsiders to buy this debt if it's not the denominated the local, local currency so there's a natural demand for dollars worldwide but if the dollar is strong for too long then it's going to be it's going to end up hurting economies outside the us i mean it, it makes perfect sense so the dollar on balance must remain affordable let's say so no. i think you know that one of my you know i i personally think that the dollar is going to slowly creep lower and the fed pausing or being a little bit more dovish is going to be the trigger for it but you know we have to remember that the dollar as long as it's a reserve currency it just cannot be too expensive for too long and uh, you know just something we have to keep in the back of our minds yeah it's a, severely deflationary yeah if it's yeah. too strong yeah and uh, it's showing up in the numbers even our numbers and Strong and also yeah. and also don't forget that it 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 it's, it stretches a lot as Taylor said the emerging market economies because in essence it inflates the, their debt because for emerging markets and the corporations the big corporations in emerging emerging markets to attract um, financing to attract uh, you know um, uh, lending interest they need to denominate a big chunk of their debt in dollars because there are a lot of investors that are willing to lend the money, but they're not willing to take the currency risk that goes along right. with it. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, hedging the risk might be costly, so you know it's better. Exactly. You made a great call yeah. before the dollar peak about emerging markets beginning to outperform the U.S., and and, uh, yeah, that, and it manifested. Great call. Yeah, and, and especially if the dollar tops here, you can understand that this overperformance yeah. is is definitely going to uh, to start accelerating to the upside. We've already seen the signs of a reversal, but it's going to start accelerating. Uh, now, Stelios mentioned something indirectly, and I've mentioned it also directly and indirectly a couple of times. And before we go to the charts, I want to talk about it because you know that you know I always want to view things top down as well. The other day, uh, a very well-known uh, manager, Ray Dalio, I think everybody knows him. Uh, he was on an interview like a, just a couple of days ago, it was. 
Um, and he was mentioning, you know, he, he's very careful when he's uh, speaking to uh, financial news, etc. He doesn't want to be too alarming. But he was actually mentioning, I mean, if you read between the lines, he was quite bearish. And he was mentioning that he's afraid that the dollar um, is in danger of sooner rather than later of losing its status as the reserve currency. And he mentioned that um, uh, when and if that happens, which he thinks it is a danger, um, uh, he, he, he mentioned that he believes that this can easily mean a very fast 30% devaluation for the dollar. Personally, I think that this is a very, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, it's a projection that, in my opinion, is probably too optimistic. Because if the dollar loses the, the reserve um, status currency, um, and knowing that the uh, U.S. is running actual triple uh, deficits, um, you know, we, we might see the dollar losing more than that, right? Uh, very rightly so. Um, uh, on the other hand, um, uh, Peter Schiff mentioned that when the dollar lost its peg with when it became from a hard currency to, uh, to when it was transformed from a hard currency to uh, simply a fiat currency, when in 1971 uh, the peg with uh, the, um, uh, gold was removed uh, back in 71. Uh, for those that don't know, um, uh, dollar was uh, pegged, uh, $35 uh, were exchangeable with one ounce of gold. So when they removed that, actually um, several years of depreciation, eight, nine years of depreciation of the dollar followed, the, and the dollar actually lost during that period 70% uh, of its value. And that's what actually led to the decade that followed that uh, the U.S. suffered from very, very high inflation, and that's when actually, um, uh, you know, we had to, uh, you know, the U.S. had to uh, save the day by raising rates to 20%, right? Um, yeah. So the inflationary period of the 70s was um, the result of uh, unpegging the dollar with uh, gold. So there is a big chance that when, you know, uh, the, the U.S. dollar loses its status, uh, as uh, the world reserve currency when and if that happens, which we've already seen some signs that the world is slowly but steadily is trying to de-dollarize, I think that there is a very huge chance that uh, what, what Ray Dalio said is going to happen, but I doubt that 30% is going to be enough. I don't know what's your opinion, Celia. You know, I agree. It's a, it, that would be a huge event. You know, it's not a, yeah, it wouldn't be, you know, a small depreciation. That would be huge because nobody, there would be much less demand for dollars for, you know, for all sorts of reasons, right? Like yeah. when your currency reserve currency, everybody wants it for various reasons. And if that stops and you still, and you're also running these massive deficits, I mean, I don't see what's going to stop it from going, you know, 50, 60, 70%, like you said. I know it sounds which extreme, is, but yeah, this is, is like the mechanics, I, I, right? Yeah, I had this conversation yesterday on Twitter with uh, Greek Fire. He, 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 he's a very nice guy and a very smart individual and a good uh, trader. And, you know, I, I talked to him again, you know, because he was mentioning that he thinks that the CPI and growth for this cycle has stopped. I told him I agree that growth has stopped, but I'm not so certain about the CPI because it depends on what the Fed and the U.S. is going to do following that. Because if you remember, I've talked several times about the possibility of stagflation it's still a tail risk. We agreed with him that it's a tail risk. I mean, it's not the main case scenario, but I think that it's a higher possibility scenario than the market is pricing in because the market is pricing in like a zero possibility of that happening. In my opinion, it's like a 20% possibility of that happening, which isn't, you know, something it's to... not negligible, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not negligible. It's not something to ignore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, and the but... market is completely unprepared for that, completely. Yeah. Uh, by the way, our friend Sigge is asking why the YouTube uh, link is not working. Uh, YouTube are having some problems. It's not our problem, and we're trying to get a, get it fixed. So it sh the YouTube stream, the live stream, should be back within the next day or two, hopefully. So just yeah, a little bit. It, it's still on Facebook it's Live. Issue. It's yeah. yeah, it's still on Facebook Live and Periscope. So um, uh, just a little bit of patience. We're trying to fix that. Well, it's not on our side, but anyway. Yeah, you okay. can you can watch it through Twitter though, or you can watch it. Uh, you know, uh, through the GoToWebinar platform. So anyhow, um, back to uh, back to our charts. 
Um, so yeah, the dollar, I, I think that uh, simply put the dollar uh, is currently uh, still in an ascending channel. So in the short term, I couldn't rule out another push higher, right? Because this ascending channel, I mean, I was viewing this initially uh, as an ascending triangle. We penetrated through a little bit, but perhaps that was a false break or perhaps the whole interpretation was wrong. It's just an ascending channel. But one thing is for sure, the dollar is climbing higher, but the, the way in which it's climbing higher, I mean, there is no momentum here. There is already very clearly defined RSI divergence. I mean, we've been diverging in the daily RSI since August and, you know, this is still ongoing. So um, personally, I think that, you know, sooner rather than later, we're going to have an opportunity of selling the dollar. Uh, so I would be very, very, very careful uh, having to do with uh, long dollar positions. Uh, I mean, they can uh, pr prove to be fruitful in, in, in the short to medium term, but in the short term, actually. But in the medium term, I expect some kind of a topping formation here, if even if that proves to be just for a deeper uh, pull back lower, but you know we we have to take it like a week at a time or a month at a time. I mean we don't need yeah. to already predict what's going to happen from there. Um, you, let one... me ask you this, Steve. Steve, I saw a count that's pretty interesting. I want to know what your thought was. That we could be topping here in the dollar, pull back to about ninety two sixty, and then make a run to new highs. First Is of all, ninety two sixty. First of all, 92.60 is a very, very, you can see it here yeah. on my chart. 92.60, this is the area. Let me, let me. Okay. Mark. All right. So, so first of all, there is no doubt that 92.60 is a very important area for the dollar. So, yeah, if we move lower, I would be very closely watching 92.60. So, up to that part, I totally agree. Now, okay. um, if, if we move lower and we find support at 92.60, yeah, it's not impossible to see another leg higher. Personally, as I said, uh, the longer down in the future I'm forced to look, the lower the chances I give for dollar to be strong. Okay, uh, okay. Simply, be simply because every fundamental way of looking at the dollar, I don't see any possible upside. I mean, um, fundamentally speaking, no matter what kind of a scenario plays out, I don't see how the dollar will uh, remain uh, strong. I think that the path of least resistance for the dollar is lower, and I think that you know sooner rather than later the dollar is going to accelerate to the downside once again. That doesn't mean that I'm going to start trading the dollar uh, short when the technicals don't give me, uh, don't align with my longer term thesis, right? But what what that means is that I'm going to be very more careful, much more careful when I'm to I'm, I'm taking long long dollar positions, and I'm going to be much more. Uh, prudent with my uh, risk management, then when I finally get an indication that the market is, has turned lower, in which case I'm going to feel much more comfortable with pushing my positions with higher leverage, looking for uh, you know more optimistic targets, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, David Brady made a good point that uh, because of the need for an ongoing, at least steady, to higher stock market for tax receipts here in the mm -hmm. U.S., that policymakers would be much more willing to let the dollar take the hit than the market to take the hit. Uh, the stock market. The, so they would sacrifice no, the dollar. Ahead. There's no question about it. If you remember, uh, before we even the interview with David, I said the I, I had said the exact same thing. If you remember, I had put the question and I said. If and not if, when the time comes for the Fed to make a decision, what do they want to do? Do they want to save face and look like they're supporting the economy, which is going to be a decision that's also going to support the politicians, or are they going to save uh, the dollar? Uh, the easy political decision to make is try to save the economy as much as possible and sacrifice the dollar. Of course. As you understand, we've done that before. We've done that before. Multiple times. Yeah, right. Multiple okay. times. That, okay. That's why, that's why, in essence, the dollar has been in a prolonged downtrend since the 70s, right? Right. Yeah, the, 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 in essence, inflation, I mean, even the reported inflation, but even more the unreported inflation, is the secret companion of any government, right? 
yeah. and especially you know governments that ha- that are running the high uh, high deficits and have um, uh, high debt. And unfortunately, as I've said before, historically speaking, within a few decades, the U.S. has turned from the biggest creditor nation to by far the biggest debtor nation, right? And yeah. it's running by far the biggest deficits. And I, I really have no idea what's going to happen when the next, next recession hits, which, in my opinion, is around the corner. I've said that a lot of times. Uh, because I can't see any possible scenario under which the deficits are not going to explode north of two trillion per year. I mean, during the previous recession, uh, the Great Recession that was just ten years ago, um, the Obama administration had to run deficits of one trillion, and that was back then when the debt was exactly half of what yeah. it is today. So uh, who knows what's going to happen after this recession? Because I see I see the vast majority of the structural problems that the economy had back then. What the Fed did is that it more or less it inflated another bubble. It didn't actually create um, uh, the basis for a sound economy. It just propped up assets, uh, the wealth effect, and in essence inflated the next bubble. So um, as long as they don't let the economy through uh, go through the pain, of realignment, the pain that a real capitalist economy has to go through, um, uh, which means that uh, we'll have to have a big recession, uh, we'll have to have many of the malinvestment um, uh, endeavors blow up, uh, we will have to let companies, banks, and whatever else doesn't work or doesn't function properly blow up. So then the economy can start functioning properly again. Of course, that's going to be a big pain. But the problem and what they don't seem to care about is that the more you prolong the pain, at some point when it's going to be inevitable or or when when you're not going to be able to stop it, it's going to be much bigger than it would initially be, right? Because it's like trying to treat the symptoms of, of a very serious disease, let's say cancer, um, they're just trying to, see, to treat the symptoms, but you let the cancer spread. And at some point you take the decision, oh, shit, I have cancer and I, I actually, if I want to survive, you know, I, I really need to fight the cancer itself and not the symptoms so I feel better every day. And then the cancer has already spread, you know, to twice the organs or, you know, to, the, yeah. to your whole body. And then, you know, the possibility of curing the patient without actually killing it or killing him or bringing him, you know, close, close yeah. to being dead. Is, is much, much higher. But as I said, the, the, bigger, the bigger evil is the political cycle because unfortunately, this problem with, with democracy, the way it works in the political cycle, makes it very easy for every politician to say, nah, I'm not going to take the pain. I'm not going to blow up in the economy in my hands and then you know, destroy my political future. I'm going to make sure that for the next four years, you know, we, patch up the, uh, we, we patch up the wounds we we take some painkillers, we go through it, and let the, the next person handle it. Or I might handle it in my next, let's say, real, you know, in 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 my second term or whatever. Yeah. Okay, buddy. So let's see what other questions. Someone's saying it's expensive to be USD short. Is oh, that yeah. the carrying charges of the uh, uh, expensive? Currency? Not not that expensive, but yeah, it, it will cost you. There is no question about it. And anyhow, that's why I said uh, having a fundamental and a macro thesis has nothing to do with short-term trading. And when I say short-term trading, I don't even I don't only mean, you know, uh, intraday trading. I mean, even if you want to take a couple of weeks of a position, you know, that's still a short-term trade in comparison to a fundamental thesis. You understand what I mean? I mean, right. the market the market can stay uh, irrational for much much longer than the average position of the average trader. Uh, you know, last. So there's no question about it. Now, um, going back to the charts, I want to say that, you know, we have an interesting development here in the USD NOC because on one hand, it, it has clearly broken above this uh, formation's resistance. But on the other hand, we're currently testing a confluence of uh, resistances. You can see this, it's, this is the resistance of this sending um, trend, um, uh, sorry, channels resistance. And it's That's also- divergence. Support- and a yeah, three drive. Exactly. And a three exactly. drive. Yeah. Exactly. So I would be a little bit careful here because I wouldn't be surprised if this proves to be 
uh, some kind of a false break to begin with. So I would be very careful here. Now, on the other hand, if we come down, we retest this, and then we we finally see some kind of an acceleration, then we can be talking about something uh, totally different. Now, uh, you uh, asked about um, metals uh, before go to, ah before we go to the metals. Uh, let me show what I what I was talking about in crude. If you remember, I said yesterday the market looks like it wants to uh, take people that were long, uh, you know, out of the market. This is exactly what happened yesterday with this ridiculously uh, long candle. Uh, so that's why I booked my position a couple of, of days um, ago um, because I, you know, I saw all the uh, elements of of a very weak rebound uh, in in the days that uh, preceded that. Now we seem to be retesting today this uh, previous support area, this previous confluence of supports as resistance. So, you know, obviously from here on, there are two possibilities. Possibility number one is that we get uh, rejected from here and we move to the next area of support, which is down there before we see uh, a bigger rebound. Uh, possibility number two is, but that has to happen immediately. I mean, today, maximum tomorrow. Possibility number two. We break again above this area and we accelerate higher, in which case it proves it will prove that this uh, flash down yesterday was simply uh, a, a stop hand, right? Which yeah. isn't something we haven't seen before. So I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very, um, yeah, you know it better than anybody. Anyhow, your Twitter handle is uh, yeah. Forex Stop Hunter. <laughs> so, Love him. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, I, I really want to see what's going to happen today. I really want to see today's close uh, to determine which of those two are happening. But one thing is for sure. Uh, crude has moved too much, too fast. Uh, I mean, it's unprecedented. We've lost within a period of six weeks. We've lost, I mean, a, to yesterday's low, 31%. 31% of a hard commodity, right? within 34 trading days in essence we've we, we we have completed 34 days in which on average every single day we 100%. almost lose one percent i mean this this rate this rate of depreciation is unsustainable in the short term you can even see that this steep descending this extremely steep descending uh channel was actually penetrated through initially here which looked like a nice overthrow, which you usually see at the at, at the end of an exhaustive move. And that kind of looked exhaustive as well. That's why I took a long position. And I, I actually made some money out of it because I, you know, I was prudent enough to bail out soon. And now after that, you get another candle that looks like that exhaustive candle uh, penetrating through this um, uh, steep descending uh, channel once again. I really think that this uh, rate of uh, depreciation is unsustainable. I do think that we're going to see some uh, bigger um, rebound uh, coming in crude sooner rather than later. There is no more any reward to risk ratio to be short. As I said, if you're a day trader and you want to be short here against, uh, let's say, 55.50, okay, that makes sense from the, from a risk reward perspective, like for a short term trade uh, in case we get rejected and, and move lower. But if you're looking for a position, uh, you know, to take a position for like some days, I think that you know you should be looking for uh, the next signal that uh, we 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 are reversing higher, and then look for a bigger rebound because this kind of a move is is literally almost unprecedented. I mean, we have to go back to this period to find moves like this in crude, which is something that doesn't happen every day, right? So even even when you have like strong sell-offs, you get some some rebounds. I mean, nothing moves in a straight line. Uh, as I said, the first signs of some RSI divergence are obvious here, but I don't trust it yet because we're still in oversold uh, territory. So uh, I would be careful. Um, so we'll talk about this tomorrow again. Um, now, having to do with metals, nothing has changed with gold. Gold remains within this um, ascending channel, but this ascending channel really has no impulsive characteristics i mean what i see here is a big consolidation which broke lower and now i see a rebound that has correct corrected characteristics so even if we push higher towards this area i would still be more prone to be looking for another move lower than anything else right 
this is one of the things that make me a little bit more the technical outlook, the dollar's technical outlook, uh, sorry, the, the gold's technical outlook is what makes me a little bit more careful with dollar because it makes me believe that perhaps the dollar is not done correcting higher. So yeah, my thesis remains that the dollar is going to be demolished at some point, and that's not going to be very far in the future. But perhaps before that happens, we need to see another, uh, you know, sell-off in uh, the metals, um, especially in gold. Now, having to do with silver, as I said, silver is in the middle of nowhere at the moment. I mean, we're in the middle of this, roughly you can call it a range. So now we have two options. You can see this. You can see this as a descending triangle. Uh, in which case, if we break above it, we also trigger a double bottom. Uh, but as long as we stay within it, um, a bearish resolution to the downside is still the likeliest possibility, right? So this is the case here. Now, uh, since we're in the middle of this formation at the moment, what can you do? In my opinion, you should do absolutely nothing. Okay, so you have two options. If we If we make it up here, Short the metal, expecting another push lower, a retest of this trend line. And if you see that this time it's breaking down, you can take take perhaps half of it off if we make it down here and then leave another half in case we finally penetrate through this uh, horizontal support, uh, in which case we should see new lows. Um, you will have a very tight reward to risk ratio. I think that on a daily close above 1480, we then trigger a double bottom formation, in which case we that would point higher towards the 1570, 1580. Uh, 1570 is also a very nice support resistance area. So I think that a break above there would target this area. Okay, so now we're in the middle of this. So personally, I would be just sitting on my hands and waiting for something to happen because at the moment there is nothing uh, interesting uh, for me uh, there. Uh, where do you see the USD gap? Listen, and we even had a client, uh, I think it was a lady uh, client, that she was uh, quite um, disappointed because before we had the event news here in October the 18th, both Blake and I had said that we were looking for USD CAD to break higher. And I kept saying that, you know, I'm looking for USD CAD to break higher from this uh, from formation because simply this is a typical corrective price action that took place above a broken trend line resistance we kept, which kept acting as support after that um so um you know we we had a client that was actually disappointed because as it seems uh she took a position uh on that day prior to the news uh which is something we don't in general, uh, you know, I recommend. I mean, taking position prior to news. If you already have a position, it's a different story. Um, and that day, USD CAD moved uh, quite lower. But the fact that despite the news that were um, a negative uh, for the USD CAD, the fact that we retraced the vast majority of the move that day is what made me say the next day that, listen, you know, I've told you that my thesis is that this is, is that this is going to break higher. And the fact that yesterday's news at the end of the day were almost completely dismissed by the market tells me that sooner or later that's going to happen. And actually, we did get a break above there. And I had said in advance that if we do break above here, the first target, in my opinion, is 133. So guess what? We did hit 133 yesterday. And uh, the next target is, simply put, 136. And I, I still believe that this is the case. I mean, I still believe that we can extend to 136. Why? Because 136 will end up being a triple confluence of resistances. Uh, why? Because that's going to be the 127% extension of this corrective move lower. It's a horizontal support, uh, actually a horizontal resistance area. You can see here in the past it acts as, as double resistance and it acts once again as support. And it's also the resistance of this ascending uh, channel. So um, I think that if we actually make it above 133, 136 is to follow uh, as long as we remain above this uh, broken descending channel. I maintain uh, a bullish thesis for the USD CAD 
Do I have a position? No, I don't. Why I don't? Because I would rather have a position in something that displays a bet some better momentum. And because I do consider it a likely scenario that the USD CAD is going to top and then perhaps develop a much, much larger move to the downside. So if you're asking me if I had to make a prediction looking down in the future, what I would ideally want to see with the USD CAD would be something like what I drew here. So since I consider the possibility that the next big move is going to be to the downside, I have no reason in pushing positions to the upside at the moment. But that doesn't mean that my thesis that we can first move higher isn't uh, what I believe is the likely scenario of uh, actually playing out, right? Uh, so having said that, um, uh, if you expect USD to fall, EuroCAD a better play is the question. And we can, ha we can have a look at the EuroCAD before Coach starts his interview. And we will be here uh, tomorrow again to answer questions. So now, what the problem is with the EuroCAD, and you can see it here, is the following. The problem with the EuroCAD is that it has had some very choppy price action, right? There's no question about it. But the whole move lower uh, looks so far rather corrected to me. In any case, as you see, let's see if this parallel makes it somewhere. Uh, in any case, as you see, there is a trend line support that, no, it doesn't actually. So this is more of a triangle or something like this. We'll have to find out. Uh, but one thing is for sure, I would be careful here because EuroCAD is, uh, is approaching uh, resistance. I think that if we make it above there, then the next target is 153.20. And if we make it above there, I think that there is more upside for the EuroCAD. So yeah. It looks more likely if the dollar fails, uh, USD CAD can actually uh, find some resistance a little bit higher, but EuroCAD might overperform. There is no question about it. There is, a, there is a formation here. Be careful. We're currently testing resistance. Okay. I'll be here with Stelios for more questions uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's webinar might not last that long. It might last, last like 30, 45 minutes. It depends on how much price action and how much activity we get tonight and tomorrow morning in European hours and how many questions you guys and girls have. Uh, there's going to be no interview. Uh, you know, we have to uh, respect the US holiday. The coach isn't going to be here. Blake isn't going to be here. Um, so I'll see you with Stelios tomorrow. Uh, coach, enjoy the interview and I'll see you on Friday, right? Okay, uh, I thought we were, uh, we're having one Friday, huh? A webinar. I yeah, we are. said no. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right, yeah, I'll yeah. see you. All right, see you on Friday. And uh, actually, I think that there's some wires crossed on today's interview. Jamie, Mark, are you in the house? I have your name up there. I don't see you. Okay, thank you, Ben. All right, everyone, <clears throat> Americans, happy Thanksgiving. Everyone else in the world, thank you for being part of our community. Sign up, uh, check us out Sunday night, and uh, good hunting the rest of the day. Enjoy your holiday, and I'll see everyone back on Friday. Happy Thanksgiving, Siege. Okay, Dillian and Ben, thank you very much. All right, everyone, that's a wrap. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings, and I'll see everyone on Friday. Adios.